Hello friends and welcome to the cottage. <laughs> so I am on my way out to the bunny barns to give the bunnies some carrots. And I thought I would take you guys along and just show you how things are progressing here at the cottage. Um, for those of you who are new, hello and welcome! I'm so glad you're here with us at the cottage. Um, I will just give you a little, um, a little synopsis of what is going on here and <laughs> what you're looking at. So, <laughs> um, my name is Julie and I live um, in a country cottage in um, my part of Canada, which is an island um, surrounded by the ocean, and um, I have a five-acre farm that is um, walking distance to the beach, and here at the country cottage, I, um, well, I have a lot of pets, <laughs> um, and I grow organic fruit and vegetables and lots of flowers, and um, I thought I would just show you guys around a little bit today because things are really starting to take off here at the cottage. So what you're looking at right now is uh, my bluebell bed. So we have a ton of bluebells here at the cottage. Um, the original owners um, of this home, uh, my cottage is over 50 years old and um, it was originally built um, by a local family who, you know, did a really amazing job of custom building this country cottage. And um, most of the wood and rock and um, things that went into building this house were either um, like taken from the property itself or um, were repurposed from old hotels and churches and like all the stained glass um, here at the cottage is, is from old churches and hotels and um, old estates. And anyway, we are just out on the front patio right now. And as I said, there is my bluebell bed that has just completely taken off and is blooming. Um, and as you can see, I am growing a whole lot of strawberries this year. Now, I have a very large garden um, that is down below. It's in, in a lower field of the property, which I, I don't think I've ever shown you guys that before. Um, just because it's quite a ways from the main house. And, um, but I'll show you what I grow just sort of around the house so I have easy access. Um, like with strawberries, it's nice to have them close to um, the house because I use them a lot. Um, I, we eat a lot of strawberries in this house. Um, another thing that we use a lot of is parsley. Um, and there is my parsley. It's growing like mad. And then over here, I have um, just my small tomato plants. The large ones are down below in the garden area, but these are grape tomatoes and I use these in cooking all of the time. Um, so those are of course close to the house. And we are going to walk down to the bunny barn and like I said, we're going to give the bunnies some carrots. <laughs> and there is my beautiful Layla over there laying in the sunshine. Um, this is a huge rockery out front of the cottage um, that has some just gorgeous uh, different types of um, flowering trees. Um, I have a quince tree over here that is flowering just beautifully. Now spring came really late to the cottage this year. Um, we had a very cold spring so far, so things are just starting to come alive. But as you can see, this quince tree is just flowering beautifully. I actually have not even put the pumps in my koi ponds yet because it's just been so cold. But today is a beautiful, beautiful day. Now, what you're looking at um, here on the ground is slate rock. And it's natural slate. It is, um, because I live on an island, um, 
out where I live, a lot of the residents have this natural uh, slate rock, you know, surrounding their homes. So, and actually my front steps of the cottage are made out of two big chunks of slate that were harvested from the property. And I just have to introduce you to Gus. <laughs> This is Gus, he is my peacock that I just received from my, um, my daughter and her husband for my birthday. And <laughs> here's the front of the cottage. Um, it looks, from the front, the cottage looks very small uh, be, just because of the gable, but it's actually, it is a fairly um, large home. It's three floors and um, it's approximately 3,000 square feet. It's very, very unique, like I said. Um, it's everything in the home is old, was old when it was originally built because the original builders repurposed, um, you know, things from um, different estate sales. So this is kind of the lawn that we use the most. We have a very large front lawn area that we don't um, use we do have a fire pit out there, but we don't we we don't tend to go out there all that often um, Not really sure why I think probably just because um, It's just easier to be closer to the house as you can see my lawn is completely completely covered in little tiny white daisies which I'm thrilled about because it's very helpful to the bees to have this many little flowers. So I'll just show you um, the cottage from this angle. Um, now our cottage is called Nine Gables um, and the reason being is because it actually has nine gables um, and that's the name that when we purchased it um, 10 years ago that's the name that it came with. When we originally purchased this home we purchased it in the area that we did because both of our daughters were competitive riders and the indoor riding arena where their coach and coaches worked out of was just across the street. So we were looking for a home and property that was close enough for them to be able to ride over to their riding arena. Now, of course, um, our girls are all grown up now, 10 years later, and, you know, have their own own homes. One is a married lady and um, the other is, uh, you know, has a career. So we don't have horses here anymore. Um, we do have access to horses at our neighbors that were, you know, um, always welcome to ride should we choose to. But um, we sold uh, the last of the horses about five years ago because, um, you know, the girls are just busy being grown up ladies and, um, you know, during their careers and stuff. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you down and show you our largest koi pond. Now, it's not, there's lots of koi in it. I don't know if we'll actually see any today because it's really hot today and they tend to stay underground. This path we're walking down is a natural slate path. So this is, you know, was not man-made. This is, was created by God. Um, but there is our largest koi pond and we have approximately, I want to say we probably have about 20 koi in there. We don't have the pump set up yet. We have a fountain and a, a special filtered pump in this pond. But like I said, it's been so cool here that we have not yet hooked it up. So um, this is our largest pond um, at the cottage and it's so beautiful. When those um, water lilies start blooming, I will do another video because they are so exquisite, you guys. And then over there you can see there's a an old fashioned bathtub that is submerged. Um, that is like our baby pond. That is where our baby koi go um, until they reach, you know, a large enough size to be safe in the big pond. We do have bullfrogs and raccoons and um, hooping cranes that try and destroy um, our, you know, breeding program with our koi. So, like I said, when we have babies, they have to go in this um, 
small pond that, as you can see, has wire across it to protect them um, from, you know, any, any type of predators. So, okay, we're going to go down to the barn and I'm going to introduce you to <laughs> my beautiful bunnies. And uh, if you guys follow my channel, you know I am a bunny nut. I love my bunnies. I have five bunnies, um, two of which are my daughters, and then three are mine. And this is our small, we have a much larger patch of um, rhubarb down below, but this is one that I just put in this year because we go through so much rhubarb around here. Um, my kids love it. I, I put it in everything. <laughs> That's sweet, of course. Um, this tree is really, this is a Japanese uh, crab apple tree and it grows beautiful little crab apples that you can make, you know, all kinds of things with. As you can see, I've got my bird feeders all filled up today. I have two different bird feeders, one for the larger birds and one for the smaller birds. We have a massive bird population here at the cottage and I, of course, feed them. And over there is my lavender bed and which you know once it grows and I harvest it um, I'll be making sachets that I put in all the baby's clothing drawers and it smells amazing. So we are going to walk down the path to the bunny barns. And there is my husband's huge tractor that is uh, been winterized so we haven't been using it yet this spring because like I said it's been um, a really really late spring like I'm I mean my lilacs are not even blooming yet so there should be some some sassy chickens around here we'll see if we can find the sassy chickens chick 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 <laughs> these are our sassy chickens <laughs> we have four sassy chickens that i kid you not they run the farm these four girls they give us an egg a day um which keeps us in lots and lots of eggs um, but oh my gosh, they have attitude. I'm telling you they come up to the house and <laughs> just boss us around all the time um, I mean obviously they lay eggs, but they're pets first I mean we've had them since they were one day old and um, and they are dearly dearly loved So let's go in and see these bunnies So the two my, these are my bunnies and you guys have met um these guys before. Um, you may have remembered that my dolly here, she had three babies a few months back and we kept one of the babies. <laughs> and there she is. There she is. That is Cashew. That's her little baby. So she now has a forever companion. Now our bunnies sleep in these enclosures um, and go into them at night. But during the day, they are out in a big, huge, um, pastured, fenced pastured area where they have, you know, free um, access to running and jumping and hopping and doing all the things that bunnies should be doing. Bunnies should never, ever, ever live in cages except, you know, at bedtime. <laughs> this is Marshall. Marshall is my seven-year-old boy. He is, you know, getting quite elderly for a bunny. Um, and I just love him so much. I just love him so much. Marshy, mommy loves you. Marshy, mommy loves you. These guys are pedigree Netherland dwarf rabbits. Um, so Marshall and Dolly... Um, both have their championships. They have been shown at rabbit shows and they are champion bunnies, but they are retired now. And um, of course, Marshy is seven years old. Dolly is only a year old, but she's, you know, busy being a mom to her little baby cashew. Now I'm going to take you over to meet my daughter's bunnies. 
Um, we once were very, very active in ARBA, which is the American Rabbit Breeders, Breeders Association, and we used to show breed and show rabbits. I bred and showed Netherland Dwarves, and my daughter um, bred and showed um, uh, Standard Rex rabbits. But like I said, she's a grown-up lady now. She has a career of her own, and she has just two pets um, that were actually babies from her um, original bunnies. <laughs> okay, so here's Wednesday. And <laughs> you want that, honey? That's Wednesday. And then over there in the corner, <laughs> hiding from the camera, is her daughter. <laughs> Fern. So that's Wednesday and that's Fern. And they're mother and daughter. They're not um, as friendly as my, my Netherlands. Um, they tend to just like to do their own thing. So like I was telling you, um, bunnies should never live in cages. They, sh you know, obviously should be sleep in cages or enclosures um, to stay safe from predators at night. Um, but during the day, I have these big pens. I don't know if you can see them or not. And this is where the bunnies are. They're not out right now just because I'm filming. <laughs> and um, you have to, when they're out, um, you have to keep a really good eye on them because um, we have eagles and we have owls um, and we have mink that are, you know, potentially deadly to a bunny. So if I'm filming or I'm in the house doing chores, they have to go back in their enclosures to um, ensure they're safe. When they're out, they have to be supervised. As you can see, there is a chair over here. <laughs> and that's where myself or uh, my daughter sit when the bunnies are out because um, they need to be supervised. And there's Layla. Layla, can you say hi to your aunties? So it's another busy day here at the cottage. Um, I have to go down to below to the big garden, which at some point I will show you guys and, um, and do some weeding because things are growing like insanely um, right now. So I've got everything planted. It took me about a week straight, a week of eight hour days planting. Um, everything and now it's kind of just maintenance which you know when you have five acres and a lot of that is lawns and gardens oh my gosh you guys it's hard work <laughs> so when you hear me on my dolly videos saying you know my I work so hard my arms are shaking it's really true I have been weeding um, or planting or pruning or we have a tremendous amount of fruit trees on the property. We have a lower field that is full of apple trees and pear trees and plum trees. And, uh, and then of course we grow every kind of vegetable you can possibly imagine. Um, where I live in Canada is like a rainforest type climate. It's very humid. It gets very hot in the summer. Um, and we have a we have a fairly long growing season and we get a lot a lot of fruit and vegetables um, here and I process a lot of it and then of course you know we have a big family and um, I keep my entire family in fruit and vegetables for the season anyway I hope you enjoyed this little tour of, of some of the grounds of the cottage and as always take care <laughs>